In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. He was, he is, and always shall be. Today, instead of a well-researched and formal exegesis and explanation of the gospel, I'm going to do something a little bit more informal, still connected to the reading of the scriptures and specifically to the fact that a light cannot be hidden and that there are some great lights here in our church in this metropolis that need to be well known and not put under a bushel. You see, this past week I spent the week, I spent this week in a room with a whole bunch of campers trying to teach them about the faith and sharing in all the activities that our great Finari camp had to offer. We joined together with other young Orthodox Christians from around our metropolis at our retreat center in Wisconsin, and we followed a program that was to really emphasize the importance of being together once again, given the fact that we had been separated and the camp wasn't able to happen last year, and that this was probably for many of our young junior high and high school parishioners the first opportunity to really participate in what they would consider normal from before the pandemic. And so it is this light, this experience of Finari, our camping program, and the beauty of the youth ministry of our metropolis I'd like to speak about today to make sure that it is within our parish well known and not hidden so that the light of Christ that shines in the hearts of our youngest parishioners, of our youngest Christians, can be made known before men with just a few reflections and thoughts about what it's like to spend a week at camp with a hundred junior high and high school students. And the first thing that you can see is just great joy. Camp and this experience is just a whole lot of fun. And it's not that kind of frivolous fun that just flitters away, but it is true meaningful fun, and it's because of two important facts. First, the joy of the resurrection. It's been said that if Christ has risen, then nothing else matters. And if Christ has not been risen, then nothing else matters. And St. Paul says that if Christ did not rise, then everything we do is vanity and everything is worthless. We as Orthodox Christians sometimes have a reputation or a self-identification as being very severe and strict. But in fact, Orthodoxy, when it's lived truly and authentically within a community, is a great source of joy. The Lord has risen from the dead and granted life to all, and we are brothers and sisters sharing one common cup, one common baptism, one common community. And so the experience that these young children have when they go to camp is one of just immense joy and fun. To be surrounded by others within your own community and to share the joy of Christ. To know that you are there because the Lord has resurrected and given you new life. Because you have received the sacraments and because you are being formed, you are there and the lightness and the levity that comes with that is so amazing to watch. And that authentic connection that people have when they are enabled to be them true, their true selves and are valued for who they are and are supported just makes this place a place of pure joy. I have yet to see somebody come back from camp who has had a negative experience and to say that they didn't feel the love of Christ and their brothers and sisters there. In addition to this great joy and the fun that happens at camp. Camp is punctuated with worship. Every morning beginning with Orthros, every evening ending with Vespers, liturgy being celebrated, the hymns being chanted again and again. And there is a general assumption and a false one that young people don't like prayers, that young people don't like church services. I can tell you I've stood with a hundred young people who didn't know the words, Titintimeotera, more honorable than the cherubim, 
when they got to, to camp on Sunday and by Tuesday morning were able to sing it entirely. I can tell you that I have watched students and young people encouraging their friends to pray with them, to pray with a community. You see, when the people around them are enthusiastic about their prayer life, when their counselors and priests and other people who are there are engaged in worship, they too become engaged in worship and experience the joy of standing in God's presence. If there is a problem with young people connecting with worship, the problem is not with the young people themselves. In fact, it's with us and our approach to worship. Because when we are excited about it, they become excited about it. When we are engaged and prayerful, when we are singing out loud, they join in. When we take the time to talk about the hymns and teach the hymns, they learn them and sing them. And that takes good, strong mentors and people invested in their growth. And the counselors that come and serve at this camp are young people just a few years removed from those that they're, they're guiding and counseling, but they are there to bear witness to what a strong faith looks like in the world. Some of them, yes, are seminarians. Some of them are going into ministry. Some of them work in ministry. But the majority of them are going into fields that are not centered on the church. And yet they're taking time out of their lives, out of their schooling, out of their potential internships and jobs to spend at least a week, if not five weeks straight, to share their faith and to guide the next generation. And that level of investment and that level of commitment to those younger is picked up by the participants and the campers. And they feel that they are important that they are listened to because people from another generation are taking the time to talk to them, to listen to them, to share their own stories, their stories of struggle, their stories of triumph, and to listen to the stories of struggle and triumph of these campers. This program truly is a light on a hill and should not be hidden. It's beautiful to watch our children grow and experience the faith of Christ to grow with one another in love and joy, and to be supported by other members of the community. This program, as I said, is a great light in our metropolis. And it is an example and a guide to all of us from around the metropolis, as Christ says today, that we are to let our light sh so shine before men. I pray that those who participated in camp at Fenari will let their light shine. And I pray that those of us who are not young people, who are not involved in the camping program, may look at that light and allow it to illumine us, may hear the words that I speak today about what it is about camp that makes it a light, and apply those same lessons here, that we as Orthodox Christians will live a life of joy. Yes, we fast. Yes, we have canons and rules. But those bring freedom and joy. They're not severe. And so, as we gather together with our friends and family, let us share the joy of the resurrection of Christ, knowing that he has risen and therefore nothing else matters. Knowing that we share in his new life and that when I am with you, he is in my presence and what greater joy is there than that? Or maybe we turn to worship with a renewed vigor after talking to and experiencing and listening to these young people as they return from camp and how they have learned the hymns and can participate in worship. And we understand that going forward, our active participation in worship will have the biggest impact on the worship lives of our children and the younger members of the community. And if we want to see them in church, we must first start by being in church ourselves. And if we want them to pray, we must first start by praying ourselves. And if we want them to be enthusiastic about God, we must also be enthusiastic about God and to understand that in doing so, we need to take an active interest in them. That the church does not operate really with separate demographics. Yes, sometimes we break up ministry by age and whatnot, but the church is first and foremost one body united around Christ. And so, as we are illumined by the light of Fenari, I pray that we look to our youngest people for ideas to support them in their particular ministry, 
in the gifts and the talents that God has given them. I pray that we take an active interest in cultivating them and using our wisdom gained over years of life in the church to share with them, to mentor them, and to build bridges across generations. In this way, the light of Christ that has shone upon the youngest of our community at Fenari this past week and the five weeks prior will continue to shine here before us, that we will be illumined by them and we will give great praise and thanks to the Lord our God who has so blessed this metropolis and the youth with so many lessons that we, the members of this community, can learn from. Amen.